if we use batteries instead of hydrogen, they lose their oligopoly on the fuel market and they will do everything that they can to make sure that doesn't happen. You wanna hear something scary? Global warming, massive hurricanes, huge tsunamis, and volcanoes coming out of nowhere. That's real scary, so we as a human species have to do something about it. As global warming forces the world to look at reducing its reliance on fossil fuels, the search for a replacement fuel source has grown dramatically, causing many to look at hydrogen for the solution. Hydrogen, the fuel of the future. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh my god. All right. And just so we're all on the same page, hydrogen is just a way to store energy like a battery. We can produce hydrogen, then store it in a tank, then expend that hydrogen to produce electricity. If you look at major energy companies currently, they are almost all investing heavily into hydrogen, and they have been for decades. An executive director at Repsol, which is a fossil fuel company based out of Spain, named Jaime Martin Juez, oh, I totally butchered your name, I'm sorry, Jaime, said this, the oil and gas companies are in a really good position to be the backbone of the new hydrogen economy. And you have another oil producer that has pledged to be net zero emissions by 2050. That's BP. They aim to have a 10% share of the blue and green hydrogen market in certain regions by 2030, according to Dev Senyal, the company's executive vice president of gas and low carbon energy. So... If hydrogen is this revolutionary new green fuel source, why are almost all the major investors fossil fuel companies? And why has it been widely talked about and developed since before the 1960s, but still isn't popular? Usually when we have a revolutionary new technology, it's picked up quickly and costs are driven down by mass scale production. But this hasn't happened with hydrogen. Okay, so first let's do a brief what is it, and then we can carefully craft our tinfoil hats because this one's gonna get a little crazy. Hydrogen Hydrogen can be stored in highly pressurized tanks in your car or truck or plane or whatever and be used as a source of electricity to run your motor. And the only byproduct of that hydrogen being used is that your vehicle is going to drip some water out of the tailpipe, which sounds like a fairy tale, right? Well, that's because partially it is. Let's talk about why. Before you can use hydrogen in your car, it needs to be produced. And as of right now, 99% of hydrogen is produced through fossil fuel reforming. Basically, you take some fossil fuel, usually natural gas, and then you take some steam and you put them together and presto, you just made hydrogen. If you want to use that hydrogen on site and turn it back into electricity, you only get around 35% of that energy. It is incredibly inefficient. But now it's time to take those tinfoil hats out because what have we really done here? We've turned a gross, nasty, fossil fuel into a nice, clean, renewable hydrogen. Now why do you think traditional fossil fuel companies are heavily investing in this technology? The public perception of hydrogen is that it's a clean energy source, but at least as of right now, it is far from it. And the history of hydrogen powered vehicles goes way back, all the way back to 1802, but it didn't really go mainstream until GM made the hydrogen powered Electrovan in 1966. This was the first mainstream hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. It had a 120 mile range and it was pretty cool. Although GM didn't sell it to the public, they just used it internally. But then into the 1970s, you have an energy crisis and there were massive oil shortages and prices spiked. This caused the world to look frantically for a new fuel source and hydrogen was posed to be the answer by energy companies. If the US was able to produce its own fuel, it wouldn't be dependent on foreign oil like it was in the 70s. So you have the Brigham Young Super Beetle, which burned hydrogen that came out in 1972, and then the hydrogen-powered Cadillac Seville that drove President Jimmy Carter around, and then in the 80s, you have Mercedes come out with multiple hydrogen-powered cars, and then in the 90s, Mazda comes out with a hydrogen car, and in the early 2000s, you have Arnold Schwarzenegger driving around in a Hummer that was powered by hydrogen to raise awareness, and then in 2003, President Bush announced a $1.2 billion research initiative for hydrogen cars. This article from 1997 states, during the early 90s, nearly every major car manufacturer in the world launched a program to build a fuel cell automobile. Then in April, a stunning announcement by Daimler-Benz AG suddenly gave the fuel cell age a timetable. Daimler-Benz also announced that beginning in 2005, the new company would produce 100,000 fuel cell engines annually. Fast forward to 2020 and Daimler-Mercedes-Benz is killing its program to develop passenger cars powered by hydrogen fuel cells. And even as recent as 2015, you have Edmunds saying that by 2020, 
Hyundai expects fuel cell cars to reach price parity with internal combustion cars. But the current hydrogen powered cars like the Toyota Mirai start at 60 grand and they're fairly comparable to a Toyota Camry which costs less than half of that. Hydrogen powered cars have been just around the corner for over 50 years and they've never been successful because of a few main reasons. They're more expensive to buy, the fuel is more expensive to produce, but probably the biggest one is that there isn't a refueling network and to build one would cost trillions of dollars, which is why it hasn't been done yet. So why do companies continue to try and push hydrogen vehicles down consumers' throats? And we should contrast the incredibly slow adoption of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles to the massive popularity and success of battery battery powered vehicles. Seeing how successful Tesla has proven itself to be with battery powered EVs, not to mention the success of the EV1 in the late 90s and then having GM crush that program, we're not even going to go into that because it would take too long, but clearly you have a large demand for battery powered EVs and yet there is still a massive push by energy and automotive manufacturers to make hydrogen powered cars work. It seems like they're pushing an inferior technology. Why would that be? Okay, now it's time to pull those tinfoil hats back out and stay out because I have some ideas. These are not fact, it's more just me thinking out loud and I really wanna get your feedback on this so let me know what you think in the comments section below. So, we know that energy companies are really wanting hydrogen to be the next fuel source. They can see that oil won't last forever because people want to transition over to a cleaner source of energy. So the writing is on the wall but they obviously don't want to give up their virtual monopoly on fuel. As of right now, if you buy a vehicle, it's pretty much going to use either gas or diesel, which sounds like a dumb thing to say because duh, but think about what that means. It means if you want to drive, you're using oil. And there are a very select amount of oil producers and refineries in the world and they have an oligopoly on the oil market. If people switch over to battery electric vehicles, that's a huge problem because electricity isn't produced the same way. The barrier to entry to produce electricity is way smaller. You don't need massive infrastructure. In fact, if you decided you want to start producing your own electricity today, you probably could. Get yourself some solar panels or a small wind turbine and just like that, you're an electricity producer. And solar panels are getting more and more affordable each year. So if everyone switches over to battery electric vehicles, they can and will be able to produce their own fuel for their cars, essentially destroying the fuel monopoly that oil companies currently enjoy. Using battery electric vehicles would essentially democratize the consumer vehicle fuel market, which hasn't been done yet. And seeing as last year the US consumed 142 billion gallons of gas, that is an astounding amount of money, and giant energy companies don't want to see that money leave their pockets. If we transition over to hydrogen, and that's our main source of fuel for vehicles, well, producing hydrogen is way more difficult than producing electricity. You need massive amounts of infrastructure. That means you won't be producing your own fuel at your house like you could with electricity. And right there lays what I think could be why energy companies are so bent on transitioning to hydrogen instead of battery vehicles. If we use batteries instead of hydrogen, they lose their oligopoly on the fuel market and they will do everything that they can to make sure that doesn't happen. Not only that, but if we transition over to using hydrogen in our vehicles, then the majority of that hydrogen will be produced with fossil fuels. So in effect, these massive energy companies who own massive amounts of oil and natural gas get to continue using those fuel sources for our green future and nothing has really changed. So holding hydrogen out on a stick like a carrot allows these giant energy and automotive manufacturers to put it on the face of, we're working towards a green future, all while never actually making significant progress. If you look at the sales of the most popular hydrogen vehicle in the US, the Toyota Mirai, their sales numbers haven't increased at all since its release back in 2015. And this is despite Toyota selling them at or below cost. And Toyota has been selling hydrogen fuel cars to the public since 2002, which is longer than Tesla has even been in existence. Clearly, the market has voted with its dollar and it's decided it doesn't want consumer hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. But without Tesla stepping in and proving that there's a demand for battery electric vehicles, this sort of thing could have gone on indefinitely because it's so incredibly difficult to start a new automotive manufacturer company. The last large scale startup in the US was Jeep in 1943. So the odds that Tesla was able to achieve its success are astronomical. But now that the cat's out of the bag, traditional automotive manufacturers can no 
longer state that consumers don't want battery electric vehicles. They're forced into action because of Tesla. Now, I should add that I do think hydrogen is going to have its uses in the future. Hydrogen has a very high energy to weight ratio, so for things that are really weight sensitive and need a lot of energy, such as planes or large boats, hydrogen could be a great fit. But for consumer vehicles, there simply isn't a compelling reason to use hydrogen over batteries. And also one answer to why hydrogen is that back in the 60s when it was starting to be pushed, battery technology wasn't nearly as good as it is today. So maybe it wasn't seen as possible that batteries would ever be good enough to power vehicles. If this really was the case though, you would think that because battery tech has improved so dramatically, they would see the improvement, see that battery powered vehicles can be successful, and then they would just use batteries, but they don't. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. What do you think? Is hydrogen just another way for giant energy corporations to maintain their oligopoly on fuel? Let me know in the comment section below and thank you for watching. Ooh.